What's good everybody? Welcome back to Cadillac Cartoons and today I'm going to show you how to do the inverted color challenge. So as you may recall from a few videos ago, I did the TikTok art styles challenge and one of the styles that I did in that video was the inverted color challenge. When I did that challenge, I used my normal colors on this side of my drawing and then I did the inverted colors on this side of my drawing. But when I did the inverted colors challenge, the values of my normal colors changed and so did the colors itself. So every shade that was on this side became a tint on this side and vice versa. And every red that was on this side became some sort of a green on this side. So this kind of ties into another video that I put out previously when I was talking about contrast. So basically what we're going to do in this video is basically a combination of value contrast and color contrast. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this drawing of stitch and I'm going to use my ruler so I can split it in half. So I'm gonna color stitch with his normal colors on this side, and then when I come back, we can transition to this side so I can show you guys how to go about the inverted color challenge. So, let's go. Okay, so here's my finished drawing of Stitch. Now I can show you guys how to do this side. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna color in the background. So obviously the background is red on this side. So it's gonna be its complementary color on the color reel, which obviously would be a, a green. But when we do this, we also gotta consider the value. But to me, it doesn't look like a dark red and it doesn't look like a light red either. So I may have to take this image into my computer and see what the value is because I'm not too sure just yet. Okay, so instead of doing it with just the red background, I just took it upon myself to just invert the entire drawing so I can see what colors I should use. And while I'm doing this, keep in mind the values. So right here where the ear is, you see where it kind of tapers in the end? There's lots of tints there because that's where shades are on this side. So on this side, there's going to be some tints on this ear. And the background is going to be sort of, that's more of a blue, but close enough to a green. So like a blue-green-ish color. So that kind of works. And then the blue, there's two different kinds of blues on Stitch. So the opposite of blue would be orange. So there's going to be two different types of orange on this side. And same with the teeth. The teeth is orange. So to complement that would be a dark blue because that's a light orange. And then same with the inside of the mouth because I don't want to go on this side and then do the line work black and then everything just gets thrown off. So that's why I was going to do the background first so that way I can work around these lines. So let me see what color I have in my collection that matches the background color. Okay, so I found a close enough color. So I'm going to erase all this first and then just use my marker and go around this line work. or the sketch rather, because this time I'm not doing the line work first like I did on this side. Okay, so now that the background is established, I can erase a little bit more of this sketch because when I apply the ink on this marker, because I'm gonna do the line work last. Because even though I'm gonna apply the line work last, I don't want the sketch lines to be visible. So I'm just gonna erase as best as I can but I'm gonna erase these lines to a certain extent where I can still apply the right color to a certain area without going, without accidentally going outside of the lines because when you apply alcohol marker, it can still come up if you use a colorless blender, but it may not be easy, especially if you're using a dark, dark color. So let's start with Stitch's ear. So first I'm gonna take my lightest color, which is this green, this light yellow green I'm just going to use my marker and try to work around those sketch lines that are still visible. And I'm going to leave some white space on the edges of them so I can use that for line work. Okay, and then we can gradually build up on greens, but when I build up on greens for the shades, I'm not going to go around the contours. I'm actually going to start in the middle, so that's where the darkest greens are going to go. And then as I go towards the contours, 
the value of the green will get lighter. So let's start with our mid-tone, which is G05. And this is a color that I'm gonna use to blend. So we got some, some shades going on right here. And with this color, we can work close to the contours, but not exactly towards the edge of the contours. So like this. So I'm gonna go back with my base color and try to blend that, that uh, mid-tone out. And then I'm gonna use a dark color. This is G28. Most of the shades are gonna go in the middle, so that's why I'm applying this here. And then I'm gonna pull out another color that's in the same color family, which is G07. And I'm gonna use this to help blend as well. So we got G05 and G07 to help blend. Grab G05 one more time. And again, we can work close to the contours with this color because this is our second to lightest color that we're gonna use to color the ear. And then now we can finalize everything with our base color, which is this Ahuku marker. It's GY4. So that's one part of the drawing. Now let's actually do stitches fur. So I think I can use Y21, Y26, and Y28. So let's use our lightest color and color in the entire area. While our sketch lines are still visible. Or visible enough actually. Okay, and now let's go with our darkest color. And the lightest parts that would be on this side, we're actually gonna make, we're actually gonna make that with this color, this darkest color. This is Y28. So since this is the inverted side, where the shades would usually go, don't put it there, if that makes sense. So like say in the middle, in the middle areas here, That's where I'm gonna apply this color. Okay, and now we're gonna use our Y26 to help blend that back together. And with this color, it's okay to go close to the line work because we're using it to blend. And I just remembered I forgot to do it on the ear. So we can do that. We gotta do it pretty much all over again. <laughs> so what we did already on this side was the blue part of his fur. I don't wanna say skin, because I have a temptation to say that. Now we're gonna do the other part of his fur that has a different type of blue, which is this part of his eye and then this portion of his mouth. So that's gonna be an orange color actually. So let me grab my oranges. So keep in mind, this entire part of his fur is a light blue, and then it goes towards a shade. On this side, it's gonna be a shade right here in this area, and then it's gonna be working towards the original orange. So I got my oranges, I got, I'm using YR68, E08, E09, and E29. So let's start by applying our orange in the right area. work around his nose because that's gonna be a different color I think it's gonna be a lighter version of the yellow but we're not on that part yet we'll cross that bridge when we come to it now we're gonna put the shades in the right place 
So I'm gonna use my darkest color and then apply some shades to the lightest portion on this side. So it's gonna start here close to the nose. Then it's gonna work its way towards the edge of the face. Now let's go in with our EO. Now let's go in with our EO8. And it's okay to add like a tiny amount on the edge of the face. That's okay. But that means we'll have to apply a tiny amount of our other mid tone, which is EO8. And we gotta do that on both sides too. Okay, so now we're onto the nose, and I'm gonna use two of my lightest yellows. Well, it's actually earth tone, but it's going to be E51 and 53. So again, we can apply our base color. And then the shades are going to go in the middle. Not on the contours, but in the middle. So I'm going to make a circle in the middle of his nose. I'm gonna try to build up on layers because I don't have any darker shade than this. Because I want this nose to kind of stand out against the color of his fur initially. So that's gonna be a different yellow just like how this is a different blue. Because this nose already is supposed to be lighter. So I'm, in, so I'm just doing my best here. Okay, and then I can apply more layers here because that's his other nostril. One is on this side, the other is over here. Let's see, do I have a color that's darker? So let me try E95. It's more of a peachy kind of yellow, or earth tone rather. But that's the only other color that I have that's dark enough to shade that. And you know what guys, I just remembered from the last time I did the inverted color challenge, I messed up on the eye. Because if you take a look at that video, the eye on this side was white and I had a black pupil. This time, Stitch has a black eye and then he has a white shine on his eye. On this side, the eye is going to stay white and then I'm going to have to add black dots to be the highlights on this side. So I just remembered that because that was my one mistake that I made on that video. So I'm actually going to do that right now so I don't forget it. Black highlights. Okay, so where are we now? All we got left to do is the mouth. Not hard, but we'll have to use our blues again. So let me get those blues. So I'm going to go back to use a B23, B26, and B39. I'm going to use that for the teeth. So I'm going to start by using my base color, which is B23. And just coloring in those areas. And so that's going to have to do it. So then let me go with my shade. And then for the teeth, the shades are over here. So that means when I apply this darker color, it's gonna be on the opposite side. So let's do that. Okay, and then I will have to be extra careful when I do this because I have a very small area to blend the mid-tone. I just gotta make sure I don't go outside the lines, even though I kind of just did. And then with our base color, we can blend everything back together. I think you guys can tell on camera, or at least that's what I'm seeing on camera right now. Um, that when I invert this section to see how I did, then there's gonna be a differentiation of, sh of values. Okay, now let's grab my blue green so we can do the tongue. Okay, so let's apply our lightest color. This is BG23.
and then apply our darkest color to the middle. And then use our mid-tone to blend that together. Okay, so all we got left to do is the rest of the mouth and then add the line work. So what I'm gonna use for the mouth are B triple zero, B double zero, B01, and B02. So I'm not gonna go any darker than B02. So we're gonna use our lightest color, which is B triple zero, and color in every part of the mouth. And then I'm gonna use my darkest shade, which is B02. I think I applied it in the wrong place. But yeah, I totally did. But we can fix that. We can use B01 and try to lighten it up. Yeah, doing the inverted color challenge isn't easy. So you just gotta be careful with every choice you make. Okay, now let's use B00. But then again, the inside of the mouth, it's just really one color with a few shades. So to me, it might not be a very big deal. But that might be the only part of this video that I messed up on. Now that we got all the colors down, now we can start with the line work. So the line work, some of it's already done, but that doesn't look very promising. So that's why I'm gonna use my white paint pen. But before we do, we're gonna give that a little shake. All right, so let's start up here. And make the line work clean and firm. And in this case, I think a thin paint pen would also work because I know Posca pens do have different nibs, but I only have just this felt tip. But I gotta kind of work with what I got. But I do have an alternative to this, which is a gel pen. And hopefully it's working because I got it over there sitting upside down. But yeah, that'll help me get into some thin areas that this felt tip can't but yeah this is the purpose that this paint pen serves that might look a little weird when I invert it only because this felt tip because on the other side I used a brush tip which uh, was a lot nicer But yeah, so that's the inverted side, but there's only one thing left to do. I gotta take my black colored pencil and add highlights. Cause on this side I use a white colored pencil, on this side I gotta do the same, but use a black. So just going on the sides, or pretty much right next to the line work, is where you can apply this black colored pencil. But you don't even have to use a colored pencil. You can always use a Sharpie, a black Sharpie, or even the same fine liner that I used to ink this side. You can always use whatever you have. Just as long as it does the job, you should be good. All right. 
So I think we are about done. So let me take a picture of this, send it to my computer, and see how we did. Okay, I know I said computer, I meant to say iPad, but now this drawing is in my iPad, so what I'm gonna do is crop the canvas, so that way we only see the inverted side. And now I'm gonna take this layered inverted to see how we did. So I'm gonna hit invert. Oh, snap. <laughs> it looks exactly like it. Okay, so I obviously did better than the last time I did it. But this purple does seem a little bit more saturated. But other than that, the colors match almost perfectly. So yeah, that's how you do the inverted color challenge. But if you want to know all the colors that I use in today's video, they'll pop up on the screen somewhere and they will always be in the description. But other than that, that's it. That's how you do the inverted color challenge. So if you liked the video or if you found it useful, give it a like and a comment. Subscribe if you haven't and tap the notification bell so you never miss an upload. And I'll see you in my next video.